Hey guys, so today I'm just going to introduce the unstandardized normal distribution or normal distribution and I'm going to show you just visually how we get down to this standardized normal distribution and we'll have a very brief look at what's called a z-score but z-scores will be covered in more depth in a later video. So what I've gone out and done is I've been to all the supermarkets I could find and I collected some data and I got data on the price of apples and I've written down this data so I found that the average price of apples was two dollars and I'll, I'll probably call this my X bar so this was my average price of apples and the standard deviation of these prices of apples was fifty cents and if we remember standard deviation is denoted as sigma so I've got my X bar equal to two dollars, which is my average price, and I've got my standard deviation equal to fifty cents. Now, what I actually found was that these prices of apples were normally distributed, and they had this mean of X, and they had this standard deviation of sigma. So, if we want to represent this on a graph, well, I'll go to this top left graph, and I'll start showing how we would do this. So we know that for our normal distri distribution, this line in the center represents the mean. So for my unstandardized graph, I'm just going to be graphing the price of apples, and I've written that here. So I'll be graphing the price of apples. So the average price, or the mean price of apples, was $2. So I will put this under this red line here. That was $2 that was my average price and it was also my X bar and then we know that if we go to the right on our normal distribution we have positive numbers so to the right we'll have values which are greater than two dollars and to the left we'll have values which are less than two dollars and at these red markings we know very special things happen because these marks are one standard deviation apart so if we've got positive numbers to the right and these marks are one standard deviation apart this first marking will be at the point x plus one standard deviation the second marking will be at the point of x bar plus two standard deviations and this third marking will be at the point of x bar plus three standard deviations. And if we remember our properties of symmetry, we're also going to have on the other side, these markings will be the same distance apart. So these markings to the left will all be negative. So this first marking will represent the point x bar minus one standard deviation. The second mark will represent x bar minus two standard deviations. Just the same. So they're the same distance apart, just in opposite signs. And you can probably guess, but this last marking is going to be x bar minus three standard deviations. So we expect that when we draw up our prices of apples, the prices which we see to the left are going to be less than the prices we see to the right. Not only that, at these points, the difference in price will be equal and opposite. So if we have a look at how to, say, calculate these values which we'll see for one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations away, we can just use these very simple properties. So the first number here for our price of apples curve will be at a point x bar plus one standard deviation away. So if we go over here, we can work out for one standard deviation above and one below. So for one standard deviation above, which will be this number here, we're going to take our x bar like so, and we'll add our one sigma. So this will be x bar plus our sigma. So this will be equal to $2 plus 
fifty cents. So we'll see that that is equal to two dollars and fifty cents. So we can jot that down just here. So this price will be two dollars and fifty cents. We also have one standard deviation below. So if we look at our below value, it's going to be x bar minus one sigma. So that will be equal to two dollars minus this fifty cents. So that will be equal to one dollar and fifty cents. So down there, we'll have one dollar and fifty cents. So I can see that fifty cents either side of the mean will be one standard deviation away. We can then look at two standard deviations away. So our prices which were two standard deviations away from the mean. So again we've got the above value. We've got our x bar but this time we'll be adding two standard deviations. So this will be equal to two dollars plus two times this standard deviation. So two times fifty cents is one dollar. So that will just be equal to three dollars. So this number here will be three dollars. And again we've got our symmetry. So I've got our two standard deviations below the mean. So our x bar minus two standard deviations will be equal to our two dollars which is our mean minus two times this fifty cent value which is our standard deviation. So two times fifty cents is one dollar and this will just be equal to one dollar. So we've got one dollar here. And we can do this lastly for our three standard deviations. So we'll so see that three standard deviations, again we have above, so we have our x bar plus three standard deviations, which is equal to our mean of two dollars plus three times this fifty cents, which is a dollar fifty, and that's going to be equal to three dollars fifty. So three dollars fifty. And then we've got our below values, so which are three standard deviations below the mean. So this is x bar plus three standard de sorry, this is x bar minus three standard deviations, which is just our mean of two dollars minus a dollar fifty, which is equal to fifty cents. So this is what our price of apples stand unstandardized curve will look like and it kind of makes sense if we think about it. We have this average price of two dollars. Most of the apples cost between say a dollar and three dollars and very few apples cost below fifty cents or above three dollars and fifty cents for a kilogram. So that kind of makes sense. What we can then do and what's often done is for statistical analysis we take this unstandardized curve and we'll standardize it. So that process is as follows. I'm not going to show how we do a z-score in this video, I'll show that in another video. I'll just show how we get down to z-scores and what they are. So we know for our standardized normal distribution the mean is zero. So if I were to translate this, my price of apples up here, the mean is $2 and the x bar is there, the average, so I'd come down here and this would give a z-score, a z-score of 0. So this mean gives a z-score of 0. We just bring it right down here and the mean will give us a z-score of zero. When we have one standard deviation above the mean, remember we have positive numbers to the right. So we know this mean is zero. So we effectively just have one standard deviation. So if we bring this down, one standard deviation above the mean corresponds to a standard deviation of one and a z-score of one. And if we use our property of symmetry, this mean will be zero on the left hand side and we've got negative one standard deviations. So if we bring this down, this corresponds to a standardized z-score of one. 
we then look at our uh, price of three dollars or our x bar plus two standard deviations we know that the mean for our standardized is zero and a value which is two standard deviations away will correspond to a z-score of two so we just bring that down and it corresponds to a z-score of two so we can see a pattern emerging here the number of standard deviations away the price is gives us the value of the z-score so if we are positive one standard deviations away from the mean for our price i.e. if we're 50 cents away will be one as z-score will be one whereas if we're negative one standard deviations as z-score will be negative one and I've missed out a negative sign there but our z-score will be negative one if our price is negative one standard deviations away from the mean so if we look at this one dollar value using our property of symmetry we're negative two standard deviations away from the mean or two standard deviations below the mean so if we bring this down it corresponds to a standardized value of negative two and if we then look at our x bar plus three standard deviations we know that we have positive three standard deviations away from the mean so this will mean that we have a z-score of three because we're three standard deviations above the mean positive numbers to the right then we use our property of symmetry and we know that we just negative three standard deviations on this side so if we're negative three standard deviations or three standard deviations below the mean we have a z-score of negative three so this is how we get our standardized normal distribution so that's why we have a mean of zero and each standard deviation will represent a unit of one and each negative standard deviation will represent a unit of negative one so we can draw the same sort of conclusions which we always draw from our normal distribution we'll just give one example so if we look here I do have this normal curve for the price of apples one thing which we can still say is if we were to wonder how many apples or what percentage of apples cost us above two dollars it's exactly the same for our standardized distribution so because our middle value or our mean price is two dollars there's always going to be 50% of values above this mean price and 50% below this mean price so if we're wondering what percentage of apples cost us more than two dollars we know that it's just going to be the apples in this top tail so it will be 50% of the apples as I say I'll do some examples on these and I'll clarify z-scores for us but that is how we get from an unstandardized to a standardized distribution thanks for that guys and check out the examples